Hello, Taurus, and welcome to your tarot card reading for June 2024. It is a fantastic big month, everyone. June is huge. We have Jupiter now in Gemini. We have the sun through there. We've got Venus. We've got Mercury racing through. We're gonna have the activation of Cancer later on. We've got Mars in Taurus. So there's going to be a lot of activity that goes on. It's gonna be a fantastic month to really see progress, to see developments, to see and feel that true sense of hope that these manifestations, that this lifestyle that you are hoping to cultivate is actually and truly possible for you. So I think generally speaking, there are gonna be a lot of really wonderful things that happen for the most part. Um, and there's going to be this new sense of revival that kind of rushes through everything. So I think it's gonna be a fantastic month. So as you're watching these tarot card readings, you are free to watch for either your sun, moon, or rising sign. However, when I do reference transits, probably you know, the rising sign is going to be the most accurate in terms of house placement. So just keep that in mind. Um, another really quick little thing, um, I'm going to be starting to post really short dailies on YouTube. I've already been posting them on Instagram and TikTok, and I just really wanted to incorporate these on YouTube as well. One to two minute daily astrology, daily tarot card pulls. So if you really want to make sure that you hit those, um, please make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell so you get the notification every time those get posted. Um, those will probably get started June 1st. Okay. So just FYI on that. Also the comprehensive readings, we go really, really in deep in these comprehensive readings every month. We get a whole second reading. So if you want to join for that, you are more than welcome. All the information on how to access those are going to be found on the pinned comment down below. I'll pin a comment there and you can also find it in the description box too. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much. I love you. Have a great month and I'll talk to you soon. Hello Taurus. Let's go ahead and get started this month with an, with an animal spirit card. So what is it that Taurus needs to know for June 2024? June 2024. Okay, we have the falcon. It says, act on the opportunity that's before you and commit to it without equivocation. I love this. I love this for Gemini season. I love this for Jupiter coming into Gemini and just all of the Gemini stuff that we have. You know, now that a lot of pressure is off of, well, actually we have Mars coming into your sign on the 9th. So it's not entirely off of your shoulders yet, but I do think actually Mars and Taurus with the Gemini stuff, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, the sun, all coming through Gemini are gonna be really fantastic for initiating a lot of new projects, getting things really going, starting to see that momentum, starting to see progress, seeing results, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be beneficial. I'm not going to say it's like, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, <laughs> important, but I'm going to say it's beneficial for you to really say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And you just really go do it and you give it your all. You put everything you have into it um, without really second guessing yourself. And that's one thing I really do like about Taurian energy in general. Actually, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, all three of these. This really isn't a time for self-doubt. Okay, This isn't a time for perfectionism. It's not a time for you know, a lot of consideration. It's just like, you know what? This is kind of what my soul is leading me to do. This is what feels right. This is what I think is going to make the most money. This is what I think is going to be the best choice. And we just go for it. And we don't have to like constantly <laughs> go back in circles and revisit and think and think and think. We can just go for it. Okay. Hold on. I'm not quite ready for all those. We just need one for Taurus for June. self-reflection. Beautiful. I mean, I think there are going to be a lot of things that come to light. There are going to be a lot of things that we realize during this time, especially with um, Jupiter and Gemini. There's going to be a lot of new connections that we make in terms of maybe why things had to be or which direction to go. But I think the self-reflection is going to be simply there for some reason i'm getting a, a very calm feeling with that card there to help keep you calm to keep you cool and collected because with all the gemini energy it's it is so sorry i have a little bit of a cough and it just comes up um it is a little disruptive it can be very flippy floppy it can be all over the place it can be disorganized and so when we self-reflect we're going to have a better sense of internal grounding. 
we're gonna have a better sense of this direction. Like, cause we're, if we're trying to commit to something and we're trying to really go for something, we have to be completely on board and we can't be being pulled from one direction to the next and getting distracted and, you know, having all this stuff going on. And I think there, there could be a real tendency for that with the Gemini stuff. So the self-reflection will actually help keep you grounded. It will help keep you focused. It will help keep you committed. Okay. Instead of being pulled. So let's see what the tarot cards have to say. So what is it for Taurus for June, 2024 that they need to know? We have judgment, three of swords, in the chariot. Yeah. I mean, I do think there are going to be a lot of epiphanies, especially with the judgment card. Um, there is this feeling of things starting to speed up, things starting to work, things starting to move. I often see kind of like a revival quality or a resurrection quality. So if you have been feeling a bit stagnant or stuck, and I don't just mean like this past couple months, I mean, maybe even longer than that year or so. Uh, if you have been feeling that, you know, this is one of those times where you're going to really start feeling the rush. You're going to start feeling the growth. You're going to start feeling the awakening happening. And there is just the word that really comes to mind is just there's a revival. All right. And with the three of swords, though, I, I don't know that this is necessarily a bad thing. I think the three of swords can really be a driver, as we see with the chariot card right next to it, that there's a lot of motivation that comes from this three of swords. So if there had been pain, if there had been, you know, disappointment, I think you're going to be leveraging that to the best of your abilities and really making something extremely positive from that. This feels alchemical to me, like where you transmute your three of swords into a chariot and the chariot is transcendent, right? It transcends the pain. It transcends the fear. It transcends the insecurities and all those narratives that we um, that we tell ourselves about who we are and what we can or cannot do. And one thing about having Mars in your sign too, is that it is very authoritarian. You know, it comes out as a leader, as a warrior, a soldier. And I love that for the Falcon spirit too, that there's just this quality of, I'm going to go for it. I can do it. I believe in myself. I'm going to really put my body into it. I'm going to commit to it. And that's when we really start to see the progress, right? Because this can be debilitating that three of swords. It can really cause us to shrink back. It can cause us to not want to act. It can cause us to just kind of wallow in self-pity. But I really don't think that's what Taurus is. I don't think that's what anyone is wanting to do. No one's wanting to wallow in their self-pity. They would much rather say, okay, well, yeah, maybe I feel a little bit bad about that. Or maybe that was really hard. And, and maybe that is a not so great circumstance. But I'm not just going to let that be who I am. I'm not going to let that identify me, right? I get to choose my identity. I get to choose who I'm going to be, and I'm not going to identify with that. So I'm going to identify instead with my chariot, which is my ultimate sense of empowerment, my ultimate sense of strength. And there, again, self-reflection can be very helpful with things like that because it's kind of like that moment where you just decide that's not who I'm going to be. It's not what I'm going to let my life be defined by. And it's like the minute that you make that decision is the minute you really start to see this progress. Okay. So... Eight of Swords, I want to start there because it really indicates, really important for us to know that there, okay, well, hold on. <laughs> there will be combination of two things, epiphanies coming up out of this darkness, and yet still there are going to be a lot of things that you don't quite see yet, okay? And I don't think that's really what Gemini season is about. That's not what Jupiter and Gemini is going to be about. It's not really about having all the answers. It's not really about having control. This is about transition. This whole time, Jupiter and Gemini, this is about transitioning because Jupiter is mutable. It's really flexible. 
and it is pulling us from one season of life into the next, okay? And we're really not, me- I mean, we can have our grand vision, which we see with the two of wands. So that's important for trajectory reasons, right? Okay, if this is where I am and this is where I want to go, it's easier to make choices when we know what path that we're trying to go down. And when we're trying to commit to something, it's also very helpful. So having that grand vision, really understanding what it is you want your world to look like, your lifestyle, your finances, everything. What is it you want your world to look like? This is going to be a really, really important grounding mechanism to help keep you grounded, to help keep you focused. So if you don't have a vision, I would highly recommend using this brainstormy Gemini stuff that we've got going on to cultivate one. What do you really see? And allowing yourself to genuinely want things, allowing yourself to genuinely have and hold those desires in your heart without fighting against them, without resisting them, without creating some kind of negativity around it. Okay. Like for example, I know a lot of people like, oh, it'd be really nice to have money, but I also think that money is evil at the same time. So hopefully we're not doing any of those types of contradictory things, but how did, oh, my cats are, sorry. (laughs) They do not get along very well. Um, But anyway, Because that is ultimately, right, you have the vision, it's going to help keep you grounded, and that's what's going to help keep the movement going. But you also really don't know a lot. There are a lot of things that you cannot see. There are a lot. I think we just need to embrace this. We just really need to understand that's not the environment we are in. We are not in the environment of having all the truth and all the answers and all the big stuff. All right, we're in seeing things from this 10,000 foot perspective, like we can zoom out with our minds and we can kind of project a little bit. But when it comes to how it's actually going to happen, it's probably going to be completely different. So we need to embrace the question marks. And I think the chariot card, the chariot energy is empowered enough to be able to do that. It's not going to be debilitated by this notion that you're not going to have all this control. Because the chariot doesn't want to control the world. The chariot just wants to control itself. That's all. And that's all Mars and Taurus is going to want to do. It's only about you. It's not about everything else. What you do with your time, what you do with your energy, what you do with your investments, that's really all all it can be. All right. And I've been talking for months and months about how uncomfortable we should be getting. Like We should be uncomfortable right now. We should be in this place where we don't really know exactly how we're going to do something. How are we going to pay for it? I don't know, but we're still going to do it anyway. How are we going to find the love of our life? I don't know, but we're going to do it anyway. You know, we should be in that place. And I think sometimes even the not knowing can be a motivator as well. It's like we're motivated by our disappointments of the past and the things that haven't worked out, but we're also motivated by the great unknown by the great mystery and by all the possibilities that are available simply because we're willing to wander into that space. If we're willing to wander into a state of possibility, you know, who knows what could happen? And I think the more and more you self-reflect, the more and more you come to that conclusion that even though it's a big blank canvas, that could be maybe that that's the most beautiful thing. Maybe that's the best possible thing, a blank canvas, because then you really can look however it needs to look, you know? So it does feel very open. I don't know that this is really creating all that much resistance. I don't feel resistance with Taurus, especially not with the Eight of Wands right next to it. Um... I'm kind of actually feeling a lot of surrender with this Eight of Swords, which is interesting because I don't normally feel that with this card. It's kind of like Taurus just says, okay, I'm, there are just things I can't see, but you're also having, you know, I'm not saying there's nothing. It's just, there are lots of epiphanies. Like I said, there's a revival going on, but it's still so fresh and it's still so new and it's still so like, And the word that's coming out, like theme for the month, 100% theme across the board, all 12 zodiac signs, there's just something ineffable going on. You know, it's uh, unexplainable, 
you can't understand it, you can't wrap your head around it, but you know, you can feel, you can sense that that shift is happening. All right, so it is, it is a beautiful kind of place, I think. So what else? Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups really is the epitome of a mutable season. Um, because we are leaving one season behind and introducing another season during this time. So there are a lot of transitions that occur. And a Nine of Cups. Yeah. Um, see, and this is why there's no fear on Taurus part because you know that as you are transitioning, as you are making this, you know, move that you are headed from an eight to a nine, there is a progression that is happening. And we know that the nine is a card of wishes coming true. And it's a card of abundance and prosperity and things that you want coming to you and having emotional success and being in this place of, comfort and serenity and peace. And I also kind of feel like this nine of cups has been earned, you know, like clearly three of swords, you, you paid your dues. You let the pendulum swing in one direction. You let the, the heaviness and the strife, you let the, you know, financial issues, the relationship issues, the health issues, the family issues, you let those things kind of get to where they got, maybe not such a great place. And now the pendulum is swinging. So I, I, I just really don't know that this is very much a surprise for Taurus. I think you know that this nine of cups is inevitable, that these wishes coming true, that this lifestyle that you're hoping to cultivate, this world that you're trying to build, you know that that stuff is coming true. You know it's coming to fruition. You know you're going to have it and experience it. It's not a surprise. And maybe that's why I'm not really feeling a lot of stress, especially not with the Four of Swords. Like, I don't feel stress around the Three of Swords. I don't feel stress around the Eight of Swords. I don't feel worry. I don't feel anxiety. I don't feel depression. I don't feel any of that. It just feels like, okay, here we go. You know, like, this is happening. We're doing it. We're committing. We're going all in on something. We're... We're just going to do it and we're, we're not even going to think twice about it. Um, you know, the Eight of Cups really is, oh, it is hard sometimes, but I don't feel like it's hard for you right now. It feels very natural. It feels like there's just this drifting that is happening. You're simply drifting away from comfort, drifting away from what has been, drifting away from what you've known for so long. And it's like, you know that if you don't drift away from this, then you'll never reach that nine of cups. Like you have to, at this point, something is literally pushing you out the door. It's something inside of you. Something is pushing you out the door, pushing you away, pushing you into the next phase. And, you know, the, the judgment card can often happen. Sometimes it's an all at once type of card. Sometimes I do see like this giant idea coming through. Boom, here it is. Other times it's like small incremental things. It could really go either way, you know, especially with Gemini being all about small connections. I think maybe there are going to be some things that come through in small, intricate type of ways. Like, okay, well, if I do this, then I can do that. And if I do this, then I can do that. And connection, little connections all over the place. And it slowly kind of elevates you or revives you. Um, but either way, you know, there is this just really significant sense of hope. Um, and that's what I think too is kind of underlying all of this, which is why I'm not seeing resistance. I'm not seeing you fighting against kind of the harder parts of this. You're not fighting against your three. You're not fighting against your eight of swords. There's just a lot of acceptance. And maybe that also comes from the self-reflection. Because again, it's like, well, when you do that self-reflection, you really start to understand what you do have control over, what you don't have control over. And if you don't have control over something, I, I just don't see Taurus like getting worked up about it. Like, oh, well, I don't control it. So, okay, <laughs> it's not on me. I'm not going to take responsibility for it. And I'm not going to 
um, jump in and try to save everyone and try to fix everyone else's problems. I'm just like, I'm just simply not going to do that. That's not on me. You know, and another thing about Mars in your sign is just simply, we don't, I mean, why would I take responsibility for something that someone else should be responsible for, you know? Another thing to note astrologically, not necessarily in the cards, just FYI, we do have Saturn and Neptune retrograding. Now, Saturn retrogrades on the 29th, where Neptune is on July 2nd, so not quite until July, but we're definitely going to feel the effects of them stationing, slowing way, way, way down. And having Saturn retrograding in your 11th house can be a really detached quality, okay? Um... 11th house is very detached from a lot of things. Saturn can be very isolated as well. So I think maybe that's one of the reasons why it's just like there can be all this stuff happening and yet Taurus is just kind of up here looking down on it all and just saying, oh, okay, well, we just can only do what we can do and I'm not gonna, you know, pressure myself too much. I'm just gonna live my life and be a good person and make my choices and commit and go for it. And, and that's that's the best. That's what the world gets right now. And it's not that you're holding yourself up to too low of a... Actually, I think you're holding yourself up to a very high standard by doing that. And actually by doing that, that's what brings the stuff in. So I think you're on the right track with everything. It's just a matter of, you know, not... Like, it's just more, more a matter of awareness, which is where the self-reflection really comes in, okay? Now, it'll be interesting to see what the clarifiers have to say. So if you want to join, um, we're going to pull out a bunch of new cards. So we're going to get a lot deeper into this and see if maybe other people are showing up or whatever. So if you want to join, we talk for another 25 to 30 minutes, usually about all these cards. And though that comprehensive reading can be found in the description box in the comment thread down below. So again, if you want to join, you are more than welcome. It'll probably be... A, probably get some more information. I feel like this reading was really straightforward. So Knight of Wands, Page of Coins. What else for Taurus? And another Chariot card. Loving the Chariot. We have the Three of Swords, the Sun. Yeah, see what I mean? Like, I'm just like, uh, Five of Swords, Three of Coins. I just, yeah. Not a lot of heaviness with that Three of Swords, if I'm being honest. Ace of Wands, Queen of Wands. Another Eight of Cups, not surprising. Six of Swords. The Empress and the Page of Cups. I love the Empress, that's a Taurus card, a Venus card. Seven of Cups. The Star. And the Moon more question marks, more mystery with that moon card. Another eight of wands, page, I'm sorry, a knight of coins, and another three of swords. The world, two of swords, page of wands. I like the page energy this month a lot. I think it's doing us a lot of favors, not complicating things, the Hierophant. I love when the Hierophant comes out with the Chariot card. Really signifies a kind of a sense of internal authority. A Nine of Swords, Two of Wands, and last but not least, we have, oh, another Nine of Cups. I'm gonna pull out one more since we got a double, a double down on the Wish card coming true, and the Hanged Man, okay. All right, so this is where we're going to pick up. So again, if you want to join, you're welcome. Link in the description box in the comment thread down below. Thank you so much, Taurus. Have an amazing month, and I'll talk to you soon.